President Al-Assad discusses with Zarif the developments in the region and the preparations for Geneva too. Russia, Kimon and the Vatican accept the need for Iran to attend Geneva too. Terrorist explosions rock Baquba as the crackdown on terrorists continue in an Ambar. for today. President Bashar al-Assad received today Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif and the delegation accompanying him. The meeting focused on the situation in the region and the common challenges facing regional states and peoples, particularly represented in terrorism and takfiri thought. Zarif asserted Iran's keenness on unifying the efforts of all countries of the region to confront such challenges and fight terrorism in order to realize security and stability in the region. President al-Assad warned that Wahhabi thought has become a threat for the world as a whole, not only for the states of the region. He stressed that the Syrians and some regional peoples have become aware of the danger of this terrorist thought, calling on all sides to contribute to confronting and uprooting it. Discussion was also made during the meeting of the current preparations for Geneva too. The Iranian minister expressed his country's support for the Syrian leadership and people in their quest to render the conference successful. He reiterated emphasis that the solution to crisis in Syria is in the hand of the Syrians themselves, who are the only side entitled to determine the future of their country. Minister Zarif conveyed to President al-Assad the Iranian leadership's keenness on continuing coordination and consultation with Syria over various issues, stressing Iran's determination to enhance cooperation relations between the two peoples in all fields in service of their interests, as well as the interests of the people of the region. Russia stressed the necessity that all regional and international sides, including Iran, influencing the events in Syria, attend the Geneva Conference too, scheduled to be held next Wednesday in the Swiss city of Monroe, with the participation of 30 countries invited by the UN. The Russian Foreign Ministry stressed that attitude of both Russia and Iran towards the crisis in Syria tend to converge on many points, especially the peaceful solution through dialogue. The ministry expressed conviction just two days before the visit of Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif to Moscow that Russian-Iranian cooperation will have a positive impact on the general situation in the region, stressing that the Syrian people themselves should take the decisions which concern their future directly, adding that the Geneva II conference must pave the way for a political process away from any foreign pressures. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon stressed during his visit to Kuwait that the UN fully supports the participation of Iran in Geneva II conference being a basic player in the region. This attitude followed his meeting last night with Iran's Assistant Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian in Kuwait. Mr. Ki-moon pointed out that the UN call on all influential parties to find a political solution to the crisis, including Iran. For his part, the Iranian officials stressed the readiness of his country to help the Syrian people, adding that Tehran is prepared to attend Geneva to a conference without preconditions. Cardinal Jean-Louis Touran, president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, expressed hope that Iran will participate in the upcoming International Conference on Syria, scheduled on January 22nd in Monroe, Switzerland. He pointed out that it is important that Iran be present in Geneva to a conference, particularly in the wake of the agreement on its nuclear file, which formed a very positive step. Turan noted that the closed workshop of the expert group on Syria held on Tuesday came out with five points, including the insistence that all main players in the region attend the conference, including Iran.
Welcome back. In Homs, Syrian Arab army killed dozens of terrorists and injured others in the towers, towns of Tel Dawu, Al Ghajar, Al San, and between the two villages of Adar Al Kabira and Al Khalidiyah. Moreover, 34 terrorists were killed and many others injured in the villages of Khirbet Hamam and Beit Al Agha. Also, several vehicles equipped with machine guns were destroyed in the form of Al Haswani, in addition to destroying a pickup loaded with ammunition, killing all terrorists inside in Al Nuaimat Triangle in Al Qusayr countryside. Syrian Arab Army also destroyed a store for weapons and ammunition in Ad Dar al Kabira, killing all members of a terrorist group between Al Khalidiyah and Ad Dar al Kabira. Meanwhile, two rockets were fired by the terrorists from the town of Talbisa into the village of Al Mishrfe, inflicting material damage only. In Idlib countryside, Syrian Arab army eliminated a terrorist group of which all members are non-Syrians, including Saudis, Moroccans, Jordanians, and Algerians, in the village of Kansafra in Al Zawiya mountain, destroying their weapons and ammunition. Among the terrorists killed, there were the Jordanians, Hazza Ahmad Khuzama and Asiyaj Khuzama, the two Algerians, Badri Muhammad Awaidat and Burhan Ahmad Al Baj, the Saudi Khattab Khair Al Dulaymi, and the Moroccan. Salom Muhammad Aqil. Syrian Arab army units that are stationed in the Qarmid factory, Talat Asfin and Jabal Al Arba'in in Idlib countryside, fend off the terrorist attacks and secure the international road of Idlib Latakia, monitoring the terrorists' movement and thwarting their schemes. In their Zor units of the Syrian Arab army clashed with a terrorist group in the village of Al Mri'iye in Al Hwaqa neighborhood, inflicting heavy losses upon them. A military source said that the clashes with the Syrian Arab army killed dozens of terrorists and destroyed their weapons and ammunition. In Dar'a, Syrian Arab army thwarted an infiltration attempt by the terrorists to sneak into a building near the Technical Institute in Dar'a al-Balad, killing most of the terrorists and injuring the others. Syrian Arab army also destroyed the terrorist hideouts in the two towns of Al-Sheikh Miskin and Da'il, killing many terrorists, some of them Saudis and Jordanians. Within the context of Iraq's war on terrorism, Major General Abdel Amir Zaidi, commander of Dijla Operations, stressed that the Iraqi tribes have joined Iraqi security forces in confronting the terrorist organization of Daesh, affiliated with Al-Qaeda, pointing out that several terrorist leaders were killed in Al-Azim and al sadiyah provinces in cooperation with the tribal chiefs. For its part, the Iraqi Defense Ministry announced that Iraqi Air Force has conducted 235 air raids on terrorist headquarters in Al Anbar. Meanwhile, Iraqi border guards foiled an infiltration attempt by terrorists from Syria into Iraq, forcing them to retreat after killing and capturing a number of them. Also in Iraq, more than 50 people were killed and dozens were injured following a series of car explosions in Baghdad and Baquba. Iraqi sources said that the most violent attack was against a funeral council in Baquba, in which an explosive device killed 18 and injured 16 others. Scores were also killed and wounded following successive car bombs in Al-Andalus Square, Al-Shala, al husseiniyah Al-Shaab and Al-Sadr City. Egyptians continued to queer outside polling stations on the second and final day of voting on a referendum on a new constitution. Many seemed undeterred by the Muslim Brotherhood's attempts to hinder the voting. There was heavy security presence outside several polling stations in Alexandria and the capital Cairo. 249 people were arrested for trying to disrupt the referendum yesterday. Also in Cairo and Ain Shams, many people were arrested for riding cars loaded with explosive devices. In Dumyat, large amounts of Molotov cocktails and hand grenades, weapons and white sticks were seized. The Supreme Election Committee said that it will hold a press conference after the closure of the polling stations today evening.
back to our local news within the framework of the Syrian Central Scientific Olympiad, the first round of the scientific tests for the subjects of mathematics, physics, chemistry, natural sciences, and informatics kicked off in Damascus today. Having been briefed on the course of the test, Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Malik Ali, praised the efforts exerted by the Olympiad Commission in preparing and training the students in order to be efficient, referring to their enthusiasm in participating in the various phases of the Olympiad with the objective of attaining distinguished results in international circles. The minister said the success of the Olympiad was a challenge for all science and knowledge seekers. He pointed out that the Olympiad was not only intended to probe students' information, but also to train them and provide them with practical knowledge. The second round of the test, it is to be noted, will be held this evening. The names of the winners are to be announced tomorrow. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Gunjan, but after a short break. <laughs>